guys, I'm Lucia and welcome to One Mic One World. This project is all about collaborating with musicians from all over the world and making an album around it. And over the next year I'm going to be making a series of videos introducing you to the amazing musicians I've been working with. But to kick things off, I thought I'd do like a little unboxing slash review slash basically just show you my setup and how it works. So my setup doesn't really consist of that much. I've got an audio interface slash preamp, we've got a couple of mics, we'll get back to that soon, and a computer. And that's pretty much it. I think I'm going to start with the mics. Okay, so here are my beautiful microphones. They are Microtech Gefell M930s. Now, if anyone knows what M930s are, they'll know that they're really, really awesome. And this is a really fantastic stereo pair that I bought from a guy called John who works at Soundlink Pro Audio. Thank you, John! I love them. They're really amazing microphones. They're large diaphragm microphones. So this is like the new stereo pair bundle that Microtech Gefell have started making. And I'll show you inside the box. Um, now, this brand are a German company. I think they were founded in the 1920s by someone called Neumann you might have heard of if you're into microphones. And here is the stereo bundle. And here you get some other stuff. Very exciting. These are my M930s. Aren't they pretty? They're tiny, aren't they? They're really, really little. They're actually large diaphragm microphones, but they're some of the smallest ones that you can get. Neumann, who was I think one of the first guys to create a condenser microphone that was available for public use. So what do you get in the box? You get two M930s, you get a little bit of information about them, which is fantastic. A couple of XLRs, I've got all sorts of extras from John, what a sweetheart, I've got a pop killer. Um, you get this new fancy bar, which I'll explain in a second. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the microphone and basically just show you how it runs. So, here's my little stand. This is a gravity stand. You can see it's got these funky green bits on. Um, it kind of reminds me of, do any of you guys know that shop Cyberdog in Camden? I don't even know whether it still exists. Um, it's a little bit, ugh, it's a little bit squeaky, but it's got nice rubber bits. And you know, if you like green, fine. But if you don't like green, there's all these colors that you can choose from. You can change your G rings. Sounds super dodgy, doesn't it? Um, yeah, I don't know. I think that they're designed for kids, so I don't know how they got onto that. Right, let's put a microphone on. You might see that I've colour coded my mics. It's kind of like a little bit of One Mic World stuff going on. I've got my C mic and my Earth mic. Yeah, very good. I get like superstitious, like the different mics have different personalities. And yeah, I just wanted to identify them because I think it's cute. So I'm gonna, what am I gonna use? I'm gonna use my C mic today. Feeling watery. Now, this is the kind of attachment that I'd use if I was using the stereo pair, but I'm not going to do that for now. I'm going to put my broadcast thing on. So this thing also comes with it. Now, you might have seen on other fancy mics you get that elastic thing that looks a bit like a spider's web, and that's to stop all the bounces and bumps going on. Well, this is basically another version of that. It's this, this kind of rubber thing. It's really self-contained. It's pretty cool. Um, and you just pop that in there, it's quite a tight fit. There we go. If you want to sing or play or talk into one of these mics, you have to do it to where the cymbal is. That's where you get the sound. If you do it in this side, you won't get anything. Or you will get something, but it won't sound anywhere near as good. So, one irritating thing about this that I found is that it just loosens itself all the time. So, my wall with screwdriver. Love it. Never been beaten. There you go, that feels a bit a bit sturdier. Yeah, somehow that screw just undoes itself quite often. And there we go. I've got my C mic on the go. Now, also in a box, you get some leads, you get two XLRs. They're really long, they're really good. And um, you can see I've got my C lead here. Let's whack this in here. Dun, dun, dun. Up, I? This is my height. It's kind of my 
my height. That'll do. My little mic. I get my pop killer. Yes, my pop killer. Now apparently this is, what was it? Hydroallergic, not hydroallergic. It says on the thing. It's Swedish, hydrophobic. Doesn't like water. Which is good when you live in Glasgow because there's a lot of water around. So this is a pop killer and apparently pop killers are really important to use with these mics because they get very poppy. Um, so I'm going to pop my pop killer on to avoid my pops. Ugh. Cool. You also get a little kind of pamphlet thing which shows you all sorts of stuff like you get the, this is this covers the N930, 40 and 50. Um, you get kind of shapes and you'll see, if you don't know anything about mics, you'll see that there are thick black lines and dotted lines and the dotted lines compared to some mics are pretty close to the thick black lines, especially here, which is good. That basically means that they're awesome mics and they're good for the project that I'm doing because rather than recording just one instrument, I'm doing loads and loads of different instruments and singing with the same set of mics. The thing about mics is that they've all got a personality and that can be a really beautiful thing. There are some mics, some ribbon mics that I'm absolutely in love with and I was so tempted to buy them for this project but it would have been kind of suicide really because they've got such a distinctive sound um, that it means that if you did a whole album on them it would sound really really um, heavy in, in one part of the frequency spectrum. Whereas the great thing about these is they're really, really, really natural. Um, so that's why they use them a lot for kind of broadcasting and stuff like that. But it also means that with a bit of post-production, I can make certain instruments sound one way and other instruments sound another way. And hopefully I should be able to get a really nice balanced album, even though I'm using only one set of mics. What else do you get in the box? Um, well, you might notice there's a bit of a discrepancy in what the project is called and how many mics there are. Yes, you would be right. There is a reason I kind of succumbed to getting two mics and that's because when you look into these mics I was getting recommendations by loads of people that, you know, Microtech FL are really, really fantastic and that the M930s are the mics for the job um, and everyone was like, oh, you should get a stereo pair. And I was like, well, you know, it's one mic, one world. It's meant to be on one mic. And then I kept on reading reviews. And what they were all saying is, the N930s are the best mics I've ever used. My only regret was that I only bought one. And then other people were saying, oh, the stereo pair that I've got, my M930s, are the only mics I ever use. They're all I need. I think that they're quite difficult to match. So when you buy a stereo pair, the company, they find ones that they think have really similar tonal qualities um, and apparently these ones are really difficult to match later on so that's why you wouldn't just buy one and then try and buy one later it doesn't really work like that, or it can, but I think it's a nightmare so I just thought, I'm going to bite the bullet, I'm going to bite the bullet I spoke to John, he helped me out, it was fantastic now I've got a stereo pair so I'm not necessarily using them all the time um, but for things like the piano or if I'm going to try and get like any um, recordings of larger spaces then hopefully it will be really 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 useful for that. So this is my earth mic, hello earth mic, very good. You also get a bar, a bar, looks like not much but it can make quite a big difference. So if you've bought a pair of M930s before you may have got an XY bar or you may have got an ORTF bar you probably haven't got the double bar. So this double bar I think comes new with this stereo pair bundle um, and it does ORTF, XY and XYTS. Very exciting. So if you're not used to microphones and stuff like that, ORTF was a kind of um, microphone setup that has strict angles and it was basically designed I think by the radio people so that they could kind of turn up on the day, whack in this shape pattern and they knew it was going to work for almost anything so they could do like an orchestra or a jazz band or whatever and it may not be the most perfect but they could set it up quickly and it was going to be good to go. Um, XY, I really like XY actually. XY looks a bit like another one called Bloomline which is quite often used with um, ribbon mics but it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's different. 
Um, I like XY, but actually I've been mainly just using a space pair. When I first got these mics, I bought like a protractor and a ruler, and I was like, everything's got to be really perfect. And then I realized that actually, it can be better to not do everything by the ruler. Now I guess I should plug in my microphone. Do you want to see the microphone plugged in? Let's get this set up on the going. Okay, so I'm going to close the box. Goodbye, goodbye. It's like a little workstation. So I usually put my computer on here when I'm recording. Ah, okay, here is my Mix Pre 3 2. So the 3 is because it's got 3 inputs, and the 2 is because it's like second generation. Um, which, and I think they're great. So I think they're great, but I've got not much experience with these things. I should probably say, by the way, that um, I'm doing an unboxing as if they're brand new, but they are not brand new. I have had them for about six months, so I don't have like the scent vein for you or the box that it was bought in. And you know, I bumped it up a bit, but everything else is as was when I bought it. So it comes in this little box. What do you get inside this box? Some stuff. I'll talk you through it. So most importantly, of course, this is why we're in the music industry. Stickers two different stickers, there's actually three more, and you get a little what's it screwdriver thing as well, which is handy, because there's two of them. You also get an adapter for plugging it in, so that's my UK bulb, but they've also got three other ones for when you're in different countries, which is super useful if you're doing kind of, oh, well, I don't know, it's just super useful. I actually never use any of these because I plug my little mix free straight into my computer using this USB-C cable. That's really all I need. It's amazing. Okay, little mix free. It's a little label here. It says limitation on sound devices liability. Sure. Whatever. Here it is. I'm gonna pack away now. This is an audio interface and a preamp. So a preamp basically boosts the sound from certain microphones and with these microphones you do need a preamp um, and the audio interface part basically turns analog sound into a digital sound. Now you know in fancy recording studios you probably have separate things to do each of those but this is so great because it's yeah just a tiny little portable version and it's super high quality for both things. It basically has no extra sound. So a lot of the times with certain like audio interfaces and preamps you get quite a lot of kind of kind of sound. With this you don't get much of that at all. So to make it work, I've set up a little session so that I can show you my test. I plug it in here. The only thing that is a bit weird about this, then well there's there's two things that I find just like functionality wise a bit strange. Um this the on switch is here and it's really hard to get to, it's right on top of the lead. That plugs in here. Now, I should say that I do it like this, but this thing is like 100% portable and you can record field recordings without a computer. So if you were gonna do that, oh my God. Again, this is like one of the things that is a bit stiff about these little mix freeze. But you put in four AA batteries. Um, I don't have one in at the moment, but you put in a memory card here. And Bob's your uncle, you can take this, you know, into the woods, wherever you want to do your sound recordings. Waterfalls, mountains, you can do it. So now I've got this plugged into my computer, I'm going to switch it on. Ta -da! There's two settings, advanced mode or basic mode, and they're both pretty functional. So I'm going to plug my XLR in. Um, and in this stereo bundle, you get a really long lead, really long XLRs, which is great. So I actually keep them tied up all the time with um, these things, you know, the things that you can back people with. Cable ties? Cable ties. Um, just because it keeps them a bit neater and it's really hard to get the leads back in the box because the hole is generous enough, but uh, obviously I uh, wind my leads up too loosely. Now, I'm going to plug it into, you've got one, two, three, I'm going to plug it into the third input here. Ta -da! And then you're good to go. So I think I'm going to get started on a project. Let me have a look. Um, just to double check the sound, I'm going to go to preferences and then audio. And then I'm going to change to mix pre for in and out, although I don't have my headphones. so. 
We won't be hearing anything out. Getting the audio set up. Okay, and then I'm going to go to my input. I'm going to select input three because that's what we're in here. And now we're seeing those big things. So yeah, just about setting up each channel. This is where the mix pre gets a bit strange. So this is my input three. So if I click on that, I get information about it. I think I'm in advanced mode now. Now you would think, so you'll see here the green one says gain. And you'd think that if you want to change the gain, you would change this. But no, that does absolutely nothing at all. So instead, once that green thing is selected, you go up and down with this, which is actually the volume on the phones, usually, unless you're in one of these input settings. So this is me changing the gain. Um, you can also solo, mute, and arm the tracks, but I find that that's more useful if you're doing field recordings and you're not plugging straight into a computer. I don't, it's not really that relevant here. Um, you've also got things like pan and low cut. The phantom is here. This is a mix pre 3, but it only has phantom power for two of the inputs. So if I wanted now to record with a ribbon mic and these two mics, I would have to get another preamp in order to do that. Um, which is kind of a bit of a shame. It would be so good if there was phantom power in all three inputs. Um, oh well, next line. They don't decide which inputs have phantom. You can pick if that makes a difference to you. I don't know whether it does. There's also phasing that you can change and delay. So that's all good. And then to close that, I just go like this. So now, I mean, we're basically ready to record. And usually if I'm not talking, it takes a bit shorter than this. So let's get the old microphone over. Here we go, very exciting. So I'm just going to tap on this. I probably want, when I'm speaking, it's nice to have a bit of headroom, so usually I try and record so that I'm kind of minus 80 dB. What, what is this, what is this? That's like minus 24, so I'm going to whack up, I'm going to click this. I've got my old gain selected. I'm going to put it up, and then that that is about minus 18. So, should we have a listen to what it sounds like? I'm going to click play. I mean, I'm going to click record. It's all new to me, it's all new to me. Okay, recording, very exciting. Hello, my name is Lucia Capillaro and welcome to One Mic, One World. I'm using my new M930 microphone. This is my C mic because it's got blue bits on it. Um, and yeah, everything is going a-okay. Very exciting. So you can hear that, obviously, compared to my camera, the sound is amazing. And then you can do all sorts of things like add different effects and change the EQ, and that helps you to get those different colors for different instruments. So that's it. That's the setup, basically. It's really, really fantastic. Um, as you can see, it's like totally portable. I've got my little briefcase thing, got my thing down here, got my computer, and not even plugged into the mains now. So I'm just good to go wherever I am. And the only other thing is that I, usually record and save onto one of these bad boys, which is a solid state drive. It's basically an external hard drive, but better. Um, it doesn't whir around like an old fashioned CD player, if you know what I mean. Um, and I mean, they're pretty pricey. So this is a terabyte and it cost me just over a hundred quid, but it's like worth every, every penny. I'd buy like a thousand if I could. That's it. Hopefully the sound at the end of the video is a little bit better than the sound at the beginning of the video. And I'll be checking in next week, I think, with some kind of top logic tips. Uh, really, really quick ones, 30 seconds, bish, bash, bosh. And then after that, I'm gonna start introducing you to some of the musicians who are playing on the album and showing you some of the tracks, how they're shaping up, which are sounding pretty cool. If you're interested in the project, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's the most important one. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook. Uh, you can check out my website. All of these videos as they go along, they're going to be interactive. And some people who are involved with the project are actually going to be invited to play on the album later. So I'm really excited about that. Um, yeah, so stay in touch. See you soon.